My name is Julie Magarian Blander. I'm an associate professor in the Immunology Institute at the Icon School of Medicine in New York City at Mount Sinai. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you reading Just it? Just read it. Wait, I don't know where I work. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Forget it. Let's cut myself no, out no, 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 completely. No, no, no. I don't want to do this. It, it's footage. not me. This is not your part. Okay. This is the part This you is the part. The particular type of T-cell response oh, that we so are focused on. Everything else, just read it. Our story is really about how things come together at the right place at the right time in order to induce an efficient immune response against infection. The biological problem that we've been working on concerns the question of how T-cell responses against microorganisms are initiated. The particular type of T-cell response that we have focused on involves CD8 T-cells, which are important for killing infected cells. Now, through their T-cell receptor, CD8 T-cells recognize short peptides presented by MHC class 1 molecules. These peptides are derived from cytoplasmic proteins. When cells are infected with an intracellular microorganism, like a virus, their MHC class 1 molecules now present peptides derived from the virus. CD8 T-cells specific to the microbial peptides can then identify those infected cells and kill them. The difficulty for the immune system is how to get small numbers of CD8 T cells that have never before encountered their cognate peptide MHC ligand to find the infected cells in the body. To solve that problem, the immune system makes use of specialized cells called dendritic cells, which chew up infected cells and then migrate to the lymph nodes where T cells are concentrated. There, T cells recognize their cognate peptide presented by such dendritic cells and get activated, divide and expand in number. The T cells then migrate out of the lymph node. Because their numbers have greatly increased, the chances that those specific CD8 T cells will find the infected cells and kill them are now much improved. The system requires that dendritic cells acquire the microbial proteins by phagocytosis of infected cells and present peptides derived from those proteins in their own MHC class 1 molecules. This means that they now have to present peptides that are not derived from proteins in their cytosol, the normal source of peptides for MHC class 1, but rather acquired from an exogenous source and then presented. This process is called cross-presentation and it is a unique ability of dendritic cells. How cross-presentation occurs has been a major question in the field. Dendritic cells can phagocytose infected or uninfected dying cells but should induce CD8 T cell responses only to infected cells. We found that dendritic cells make this decision by cross-presenting microbial peptides far more efficiently than non-microbial peptides. This selective process of cross-presenting microbial peptides is regulated through a set of receptors called toll-like receptors that signal when they detect microbial components. We found that MHC class 1 molecules, indicated here by red, get delivered only to phagosomes, marked here by the blue color, that contain microbial ligands, which engage signal transduction by toll-like receptors. It turns out that MHC class 1 delivery to phagosomes is the rate-limiting step dictating the efficiency of cross-presentation. We were then curious about where these MHC class 1 molecules were coming from. We discovered that MHC class 1 molecules were concentrated in an endosomal recycling compartment, or ERC for short, marked by the small GTPase rab 11 a and the snare proteins VAMP3 and VAMP8. We discovered that dendritic cells with the capacity to cross-present express high levels of rab 11 a the activity of which stocks the ERC with large reserves of MHC class 1 molecules. When dendritic cells phagocytose cargo like uninfected cells that lack the ligands for toll-like receptors, these ERC resident MHC class 1 molecules fail to get recruited to the phagosomes. On the other hand, when a microbial pathogen or infected cells are phagocytosed, now we start to see these MHC class 1 molecules accumulating on the phagosome. Suggesting that a toll-like receptor signal mobilizes these ERC stores of MHC class 1 leading to their accumulation on the phagosome. So what is the nature of this signal? Our data show that toll-like receptors phosphorylate a snare-associated protein called SNAP23 which resides on the cytosolic side of the phagosome. Upon phosphorylation, SNAP23 mediates the formation of stable snare complexes between the ERC and the phagosome. 
This event leads to fusion of these compartments such that now the MAC class 1 molecules and the microbial proteins are together in one and the same compartment. However, this is still not sufficient to load microbial proteins onto these newly recruited ERC resident MHC class 1 molecules. So to facilitate this, components of the so-called peptide loading complex must also be brought to this compartment. These were already known to come from yet a different compartment called the ER Golgi intermediate compartment or the ERGIC. And we found that this step can occur independently of toll-like receptor signaling and helps in the final step of loading microbial peptides onto MHC class 1 molecules. So by bringing all these components together from different sources, the phagosome now turns into a compartment that is licensed to specifically and efficiently load microbial peptides onto MHC class 1 molecules and use those peptides to activate CD8 T cells. Why are these data significant? because they reveal how an intricate network of communication among organelles can shape the immune response and do this at the subcellular level. Now by learning the trade secrets of dendritic cells, we can use this information to design better strategies for inducing immunity to viruses, bacteria and cancer cells.